Yeah. You know what? We've got to take a moment here for our sponsor, I believe, here. Why are we here tonight, anyway? And I have a sponsor for my show, and that is the uh, Rinaldi Sauce. Rinaldi Sauce? Yes, uh, tonight uh, we're sponsored with, with a, uh, we have a brand new fresh jar. Is there someone here who can help out my art project without any chance of remuneration, money whatsoever, or even condole, even acknowledgement that you've done it? Is there any? Larry Harvey, will you come up here and help me, please? Larry Harvey, can you come up, please, and help with this project? I want you to give this, ladies and gentlemen, fine jar, fine art jar, and you can help out my art project, for which I will pay you not one cent, or even acknowledge that you're doing it. Please give this to Chicken John. Thank you, please. Okay, can you do this? And please do it promptly and without asking any questions or sending me any email or calling me up. First thing you've ever given me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Larry, we're done with you now. You can Thanks, disappear Larry. into the background. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now check, check wow, out. I got a jar of bullshit from Larry Harvey. <laughs> Actually, this is a brand new fresh jar of Chick John Rinaldi. Art is heart sauce. Art is heart sauce. Why is art hard? Why is it hard? Let's find out right now. Chicken art John has endorsed every one of these things in his jar of why art is hard. It's hard because I'm tired from the endless arguments with various bodies of water. Art is hard because I got no help from my damn iPhone. Okay. Art is hard. You had fun, right? So shut up. Doesn't always work with art critics. Okay. <laughs> Art is hard because hate being forced to call minions collaborators. Yeah. I hate that. One of the hardest you things. You know, they fucking heart. show up, they like sort of work for like 10 minutes and then like they're my collaborator. Fuck that. Art makes me sleepy. Okay, no spare time for much needed abortion. <laughs> it's so easy, ladies and gentlemen. To get art finished, at first I had to go do a thing. If you know me, you know that that's like, 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 I had to do a thing with a guy over there. Shut up. Okay. Your average art chick stronger, prettier, and more talented than me, Chicken John, artist, okay? Laws of physics constantly interfering with my vision! Dominant paradigm, actually not all that bad. Think about it. Sparks constantly interfering with my vision. <laughs> hey, it's so Decided to paint art boat mauve, fuchsia, and taupe, but only have purple, red, and brown paint. Okay. Is that funny? We did that one, and here's our last one. My art keeps sinking. Okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. Anyway, art is hard. Uh, because building cities in the ocean is easy, right? It's not going to be any problem. How many seasteaders are here? You guys really are libertarians, aren't you? Right? Right? Oh, right, yeah. You guys who want to pattern your government after Somalia, right? Yeah! Uh, just checking here. Let's go back to some space, though. To the Saturnian system, the Cassini orbiter here above Chevrolet, the stage here, we see the model of the Cassini orbiter here. This is made out of paper. It costs you nothing but seven pages of paper in your printer. The real orbiter costs one and a half billion dollars. The whole program over 25 years has cost about three billion dollars. And it has brought back a photograph of a potato-shaped moon. Prometheus. And now I'm only showing you this because this is the best picture they've gotten of Prometheus so far. It's embedded within the rings. It's actually uh, created something called the Keeler Gap. Uh, let me show you what this moon is doing. Next image, please. This moon and another moon are the shepherd moons around the F ring. Now they've taken a, a very complex mosaic of the F ring, which they have had a lot of trouble figuring out. How does it get that bizarre, complicated shape? around around there, which you see. You see fan-shaped things, you see other plays, and of course, what do those arrows mean, chicken? What the fuck are you talking about? The F ring is a ring around the outermost easy-to-see ring around the Saturnian system is 
influenced by these two moons, one of which is Prometheus. And actually, Prometheus influences all the more. And when you take a, long, a, a mosaic of all the offering, and you stretch them out in a line, and then you put a bunch of arrows and numbers into it, I can present it here at the Ask Dr. House show. That's the important thing. Now, you're wondering, why is that ring got such strange little marks, yeah. ridges, fan shapes, streamers, and jets in it? Because you have these two moons coming around it. <laughs> Libertarians don't support school. They can't really push. There, Here we go. Dance of particles. And here is a, a, a this again is a, a this wow. is not real. This is just an animation, okay? Just like the cartoon you saw it's a earlier. Cartoon. The first time the moons go around, it causes these channels to form. The channels bounce up and down out of the ring plane. And then the material forms up into the edges of the channels and bunches up. Now the moon on the inner part, Prometheus is the inner part of this ring. So it spins faster than the ring, and it spins around faster than the ring rotates around Saturn. And as it goes around, it keeps dragging this channels that is created by pulling the material out of the ring. By the way, the material is nothing but snowballs, probably, you know, the size, and every 68 days it circles the whole planet and it stretches these out into fan-shaped blades, and then the second time, superimposing onto those fan-shaped blades, another set of channels being formed, and this is how you get the structure of the outermost F-ring of the Saturnian system from the two shepherding moons, mostly from Prometheus, the inner moon, which is spinning faster. And I thought you'd like to know how that works. There you have it. Whoa! I almost got that for like a second. Right. And this was Whoa. Camp Tipsy. Camp Tipsy! Yeah, there's my boat. And what was the name of my boat, Chicken? Do you remember that? The name of your boat? Yeah, it was Made in China. My boat was Whoa. called Made in China, Inflated in America. There it is. That's and, American uh, Air. That's my wife, Sarah, and my daughter, Naria. And we had a wonderful time at Camp Tipsy. We're five years married, and everyone on this stage was at my wedding. Thank you very much, and I'm glad you time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Goldie, he comes here to talk about space, space, space. I'm going to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that if Pete Goldie didn't come here to talk about space, you still wouldn't care. This is better than the Cassini Orbiter. This is the boat that we built, and uh, this is the motor right here. And uh, this, there's a battery thing. It used to work, but the battery ran out. The motor like actually used to spin. And that's a. Uh, it's kind of. I just wanted to show you this, ladies and gentlemen, because I wanted to show you the power of the minion. If you had a minion, you could tell them to make a cardboard boat for you. And you, were, and you been, would have been kidding, and then they wouldn't know that, and then they would actually build a cardboard boat for you. Right there, that's what you would have. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is, a, uh, this is a monument to minions everywhere. That's all. Appreciate our minions. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it's the one year anniversary of Dammit's death today. And uh, it's kind of a weird topic, but it's not, it's not bad. It's not like sad or whatever. You know, it's 19 and a half years. The dog lived. The dog lived to be like 127 in human years. It's kind of crazy. It's like a year ago today. Yeah! Yeah! And a boo! There she is. Aww. Yeah. The <gasps> <No> winter dog. <laughs> Let's just spend the next half hour looking at dog pictures. <laughs> you know? Oh! Yeah. Oh, cool. oh, the early hard. years. The early years. Before the yes. tilt. And then she had that problem, and then her head got all crooked. And that's the same picture as before. <laughs> you got one? You got one of her jumping? Jumping at the man? There we go! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Look at that! Is that what David Lee Roth? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's the David Lee Roth of dogs. <laughs> there it is. She used to jump like gravity didn't notice her. You know, like she was getting away with something. It was amazing. She was, she was a good dog, man. Bubble. It was kind of weird. Aww. She's playing the calliope. You know, I, I I have to admit that I did smear peanut butter on the keys. <laughs> so it looks like she's playing the calliope, but she's just 
just licking the, licking the keyboard. I stole that Calliope though, fair and square, from studio instrument rentals. I rented it for a day and I never brought it back. <laughs> it's the best $40 I ever spent. So I guess that was my monologue, it's kind of weird. It's, making it up. it's not funny. Talking about my dog here, man, I can't.